Skora wondered which species the Kraxan Empire would genocide next, as the angry humans tended to call it. The young Iridian sat in his living pod, eyes riveted on the hollow display broadcasting the latest news. The ruthless Kraxan Empire, led by the cruel Emperor Zorgax, had conquered yet another planet, enslaving its inhabitants. Skora's stomach churned as images of Kraxan soldiers rounding up terrified civilians flashed across the screen. Iridia Prime, Skora's homeworld, teetered on the front lines of the war between the Galactic Confederation and the Kraxans. The Confederation had promised reinforcements to protect the vulnerable planet, but as Skora watched, a grim-faced official announced they could not spare any ships. They had abandoned Iridia Prime to its fate. Skora's father, a high-ranking Iridian military officer, slammed his fist on the table, his voice shaking with rage at the betrayal. He vowed to fight to the last to defend their world. But Skora saw the fear in his eyes, the slump of his shoulders. What hope did they have against the might of the Kraxon war machine? As despair threatened to engulf him, Skora remembered whispers he'd heard about another species, one not part of the Confederation, a young race called humans from a distant planet named Earth. Rumors spoke of their fierceness in battle, their refusal to back down from a fight. Some even called them savages. But as Skora huddled in his pod, watching his world's doom unfold on the hollow display, he couldn't help but wonder, would these angry, savage humans be Iridia Prime's only hope? Or would they too turn their backs, leaving the Iridians to face the Kraxons alone? With each passing moment, the Kraxon fleet drew closer, and time ran out for Skora's people. They needed a miracle. They needed someone, anyone, to stand with them against the coming darkness. They needed the humans. Skora's father strode into the living pod, his face grim. He wore his battle armor, the metal plates gleaming under the artificial light. Skora knew what that meant. It was time for his father to leave, to join the fight against the Kraxons. Son, come here, his father said, beckoning him over. I need to talk to you. Skora approached, his heart heavy. He didn't want his father to go, didn't want to face the possibility of losing him, but he knew it was his father's duty. His father placed a hand on Skora's shoulder, his grip firm. I received a transmission from an old friend. Zorax, a retired Confederation admiral, he told me something that might be our last hope. Skora's eyes widened. What is it? Zorax spoke of a species called humans. They were part of the Confederation long ago, but left after a conflict. They're known for their warriors and technology. Zorax thinks they could help us against the Kraxons. Skora frowned. He had heard the rumors about the humans, the whispers of their savagery. But didn't they vow to never get involved in galactic affairs again? His father nodded. They did. But Zorax believes they might make an exception for us. He wants me to send an envoy to their home system, Solaris, to ask for their help. Skora's mind raced. It was a desperate plan, but what choice did they have? The Confederation had abandoned them. The Kraxons were coming. His father squeezed his shoulder. I want you to go, Skora. I want you to be that envoy. Skora's mouth fell open. Me, but I'm not a diplomat. I'm not a warrior. I'm just a kid. You're my son, his father said, his voice fierce. I trust you more than anyone. I know you can do this. Skora swallowed hard. He was afraid, more afraid than he had ever been. But he saw the faith in his father's eyes, the desperate hope. He knew he couldn't refuse. I'll do it, Skora said, his voice shaking only a little. I'll go to Solaris. I'll find the humans. His father pulled him into a tight embrace. I'm proud of you, son, so proud. Skora hugged him back, fighting back tears. Then he stepped back, squaring his shoulders. I won't let you down, father. I won't let our people down. His father nodded, a small smile on his face. I know you won't. Skora turned and strode out of the living pod heading for the spaceport. He had a small, fast ship waiting for him, one that could slip past the cracks on blockade. He had a message from his father, a plea for help. And he had the hopes of his people resting on his young shoulders as he set out into the stars, towards a distant planet called Earth and a mysterious species known as humans. 
a scorer's small ship approached Solaris, a blinding blue light engulfed his vessel. The ship shuddered and groaned as an unseen force latched onto it, dragging it towards a massive structure orbiting the planet. Scorer's heart raced as he realized he was caught in a tractor beam, his ship helpless in its grasp. He gripped the controls, his knuckles pale, as he was pulled towards what appeared to be a heavily fortified space station. The young Iridian's mind whirled with fear and doubt. Had he fallen into a trap? Were the humans as hostile as the rumors suggested? As his ship was drawn into a cavernous docking bay, Scorer saw rows of sleek, menacing warships lined up like predators waiting to strike. He swallowed hard, his mouth dry. The ship shuddered to a halt, and Scora heard the clank of heavy boots on metal. A group of human soldiers, clad in black armor and carrying pulse rifles, surrounded his vessel. Scora's eyes widened as he took in their towering frames and rippling muscles, so different from the lithe Iridians. The soldiers yanked Scora from his ship, their grip firm but not brutal. They marched him through the space station's stark corridors, their faces impassive behind dark visors. Scora's heart hammered in his chest as he was shoved into a small bare cell. The door slammed shut behind him with a clang that echoed in his bones. Scora paced the cell, his mind racing. He had to make the humans understand, had to convince them to help his people. But would they even listen? The cell door hissed open, and a tall, broad-shouldered human strode in. His face was stern, his jaw set, and his eyes pierced Scora like lasers. The human removed his helmet, revealing close-cropped grey hair, and a face etched with lines of authority. "'I am Captain Grayson,' the human said, his voice deep and commanding. "'You have entered human space without permission. Explain yourself.' Scora straightened, trying to project a confidence he didn't feel. I am Scora, son of Commander Zoran of Iridia Prime. I come seeking your help. Grayson's eyes narrowed. The Confederation's wars are not our concern. We left your squabbles behind long ago. Scora's heart sank, but he pressed on. The Kraxons are not just the Confederation's enemy. They are a threat to all life in the galaxy. They have conquered countless worlds enslaved entire species. They revel in genocide and destruction. Grayson's face remained impassive. And why should this matter to us? We have our own concerns. Scorer's voice shook with emotion as he spoke. The Confederation has abandoned us. They promised to protect Iridia Prime, but now they have left us to face the Kraxons alone. We are defenseless against their onslaught. Without help, my people will be slaughtered or enslaved, he reached into his pocket and withdrew a small data chip. This is a message from my father, Commander Zoran. He asks for your help in the name of the friendship that once existed between our peoples. Please, at least, listen to his words. Grayson took the chip, turning it over in his fingers. His expression was unreadable. I will relay this to my superiors, he said finally. But do not get your hopes up, Iridian. We are not in the habit of fighting other species' battles. With that, he turned and strode out of the cell, leaving Scora alone with his fear and his fading hope. The young Iridian slumped against the wall, his heart heavy. He had delivered his message, but would it be enough? Would the humans answer his people's desperate plea, or would they turn their backs just as the Confederation had? Only time would tell, and time was running out for Iridia Prime. Scora sat on the hard bench in his cell, head in his hands. Hours had crawled by since Captain Grayson left with his father's message. The weight of his mission pressed down on his shoulders. If the humans refused to help, his people were doomed. The Kraxons would slaughter them all. Despair threatened to swallow him. The cell door hissed open. Scora's head snapped up. Captain Grayson strode in, his face unreadable. Behind him came an older human, tall and broad, with a neatly trimmed beard streaked with silver. The man's uniform was adorned with a dazzling array of medals that glinted under the harsh lights. Scorer scrambled to his feet, heart pounding. Grayson stepped aside, allowing the older human to approach. The man's eyes, a piercing blue, fixed on Scorer. I am Admiral Stark, commander of the human fleet, he said, his voice deep and resonant. I have reviewed your father's message and discussed it with my staff. 
Scora swallowed hard, mouth dry. And, he managed to croak out. Stark clasped his hands behind his back. We have decided to help your people, the Iridians. But make no mistake, we do this not out of any affection for the Confederation. They made their bed when they betrayed you. Relief crashed over Scora like a wave. His knees felt weak. Thank you, he whispered. Thank you so much. Stark held up a hand. Don't thank us yet. We have been watching the Craxons, tracking their movements. Their brutality and disregard for life have not gone unnoticed. If they are not stopped, they will threaten every civilization in the galaxy, including Earth. Skora nodded, understanding dawning. The humans were acting in their own self-interest. But right now he didn't care about their reasons. All that mattered was that they were willing to fight. I will send a fleet of our most advanced warships to assist in the defense of Iridia Prime, Stark continued. But I have a condition. Your people must share any intelligence you have on the Kraxons' tactics and technology. We need to know what we're up against. Of course, Iskora said without hesitation, I'll make sure you get everything we have. Stark nodded, satisfied. Good, Captain Grayson will escort you to your ship. You are free to go. As Skora followed Grayson out of the cell, his heart soared with hope. The humans were coming. His people had a chance. But Admiral Stark's parting words echoed in his mind. One more thing, the Admiral had said, his gaze intense. Our involvement must be kept secret from the Confederation. We have no desire to be drawn back into galactic politics. As far as they know, you came here and left empty-handed. Understood? Skora had agreed, knowing the risks of defying the humans. As he prepared his ship for the journey home, he couldn't shake the feeling that this was just the beginning. The Kraxons would not be easily defeated, and the humans' price for their aid might be higher than anyone realized. But for now, all that mattered was getting the news to his father and his people. The humans were coming. Iridia Prime would not stand alone. Skora's ship dropped out of hyperspace, the blue-green orb of Iridia Prime filling his viewscreen. But instead of the peaceful world he had left, he saw the flashes of orbital bombardment and the wreckage of destroyed ships drifting in space. The Kraxons had arrived. He punched his thrusters to full, racing towards the planet's surface. As he entered the atmosphere, the signs of battle became clearer, smoke rose from burning cities, and the thunder of distant explosions echoed through the air. Skora landed at the capital's spaceport, leaping from his ship before the ramp had fully extended. He sprinted towards the command center, his heart pounding. Inside, he found chaos. Officers shouted orders over the din of alarms, and the holographic display showed the Kraxon forces advancing on all fronts. In the center of the room, the Iridian High Council argued heatedly. Some advocated for surrender, saying it was the only way to save lives. Others, including Skora's father, insisted they fight to the last. But Skora could see the despair in their eyes. They knew they were outmatched. Father! Skora called out, pushing his way through the crowd. His father turned, his face etched with weariness and pain. Skora saw the bandages wrapped around his torso, stained with blood. Skora? What are you doing here? I thought... The humans are coming, Skora interrupted, his voice ringing out over the noise. They've agreed to help us. The room fell silent. The councillors stared at Skora in disbelief. The humans, one asked, but they swore never to get involved in our wars again. They've changed their minds, Skora said. They're on their way now with a fleet of warships. We just have to hold out until they arrive. His father's eyes shone with renewed hope. He turned to the others. You heard my son. We're not alone in this fight. We just have to hold the line a little longer. As if on cue, a new alarm blared. Incoming ships detected, an officer shouted. They're not Kraxon, they're, they're, they're human. On the display, a fleet of sleek angular ships dropped out of hyperspace near Iridia Prime. They moved with a grace and precision that put the Confederation ships to shame. At their head was a massive dreadnought, its hull emblazoned with the letters USS Titan. The human ships plunged into the fray, their weapons blazing. The Kraxons, caught off guard, scrambled to respond, 
but the humans fought with a ferocity and unpredictability that threw the Kraxons into disarray. Their ships danced around the Kraxon battlecruisers, pummeling them with missile barriers and energy beams. Skora watched in awe as the tide of battle shifted. The Kraxons, so used to the staid tactics of the Confederation, couldn't adapt to the humans' unorthodox style. Their formation broke, ships scattering in panic. A cheer went up in the command center. For the first time since the invasion began, there was hope. Skora's father clasped his shoulder. You did it, son. You brought us the miracle we needed. Skora shook his head. It's not over yet. We still have to drive them back. He turned and ran back to his ship. As he took off, he saw Iridian fighters rallying around the human ships, their spirits renewed. He joined their formation, his heart swelling with pride and determination. Together they dove into the battle, the fate of Iridia Prime hanging in the balance. Skora knew the fight was far from over, but with the humans by their side they had a chance, and he would make sure that chance wasn't wasted. The throne room shook as Emperor Zorgak slammed his fist on the armrest of his obsidian throne. The metal bent under the force of the blow. His advisers cowered, none daring to meet his furious gaze. How did this happen? Zorgax roared. How did the humans even know about our invasion plans? The advisers glanced at each other nervously. Finally, one stepped forward, his head bowed. Your Majesty, our intelligence suggests the humans have been spying on us for years. They used advanced stealth tech to hack our systems and eavesdrop on our comms. Zorgax's eyes narrowed. And how did they accomplish such a feat without us noticing? Another advisor spoke up, his voice trembling. We believe they had help from within, Your Majesty, a traitor in our midst. Who? Zorgax demanded, his voice low and dangerous. The advisor swallowed hard. General Zaloth, sire. We have evidence he's been feeding the humans information, including details of the Iridia Prime invasion. Zorgax went still, a vein pulsing in his temple. Zaloth, one of his most trusted generals, a traitor. The thought filled him with a cold, seething rage. Bring him to me, he said, his voice deceptively calm. I want to look into his eyes as he dies. The advisers bowed and scurried out. Minutes later, a squad of cracks on guards dragged a battered Zaloth before the throne. The general lifted his head, meeting Zorgax's gaze with defiance. Why Zaloth? Zorgax asked. Why betray your own kind? Zaloth spat blood on the polished floor. I grew tired of your brutality, your endless hunger for conquest. The humans offered a better way. Zorgax's face contorted with fury. He rose from his throne, drawing his plasma blade. The weapon hummed to life, casting a sickly green glow. Your way leads to extinction, Zorgax snarled. With a roar, he swung the blade, separating Zaloth's head from his shoulders. The general's body crumpled, blood pooling on the floor. Zorgax turned to his remaining advisers, his eyes blazing. Recall all our forces. Prepare for a counterattack. We will crush the humans and the Iridians beneath our heel. The advisers nodded, not daring to question. Zorgax wasn't finished. And tell the scientists to work faster on the new weapon. I want it ready to unleash hell on our enemies. We'll see how the humans like a taste of their own medicine. As the advisers scurried to carry out his orders, Zorgax sat back on his throne, seething. The humans had caught him by surprise this time. It would not happen again. He would make them pay for their interference, and the Iridians would be the first to feel his wrath. The sky over Iridia Prime glowed an angry orange. Smoke billowed from the ruins of shattered cities. Craters pockmarked the once lush landscape. The combined human and Iridian fleet hung in low orbit, their hulls scorched and battered from the ferocious battle against the Kraxon invaders. On the bridge of the USS Titan, Admiral Stark stood with his hands clasped behind his back, his eyes fixed on the viewscreen. Beside him, Commander Zoran, Scorer's father, leaned heavily on a crutch, his face etched with pain and exhaustion. We've driven them back for now, Stark said, his voice grim, but the cost... Zoran nodded, his eyes haunted. So many lives lost, and for what? The Kraxons will return with even greater numbers.
a communications officer called out from her station. Admiral, we're receiving a distress call from the Iridian colony on Zephyr III. They're under attack by a new Kraxon fleet. Stark frowned. Zephyr III? That's where the Iridians have their advanced research facility, isn't it? Zoran's eyes widened. Yes, the scientists there were working on a secret project, something that could change the course of the war. Stark turned to face him. What kind of project? Zoran hesitated, then lowered his voice. A new type of weapon, one that harnesses the power of dark energy, but it's still experimental and highly unstable. Stark's jaw tightened. He knew the dangers of rushing untested technology into battle, but if the Kraxons got their hands on this weapon first... He made his decision. We have to protect that colony. Commander, I'm splitting the fleet. I'll take the Titan and half our ships to Zephyr the Three. You stay here with the rest and guard Iridia Prime. Zoran looked like he wanted to argue, but a sharp pain from his injuries made him wince. He nodded reluctantly. Stark turned to the communications officer. Send a message to the Iridian Command. We need their fastest ship and a team of their best special forces. As the officer relayed the message, Skora stepped onto the bridge. The young Iridian had proved himself in the battle, fighting with a skill and bravery that belied his years. I volunteer to lead the special forces team, Admiral, Skora said, his voice firm despite the fear in his eyes. We can infiltrate the Kraxon command ship, find out what they're planning. Stark studied him for a long moment, then he nodded. Very well, but be careful, we don't know what you'll find on that ship. As Skora left to prepare his team, another message came through on the comm. Stark's face darkened as he listened. It's the Confederation, he said to Zoran. They know we're here and they're demanding answers. Zoran closed his eyes, his shoulders sagging. We knew this day would come. But we don't have time for their politics, not with the Kraxons at our doorstep. Stark's expression hardened. Agreed. I'll deal with the Confederation. You focus on keeping Iridia Prime safe. He turned to his crew. Prepare for jump to Zephyr the Third and send a message to Earth. Tell them, tell them we might need reinforcements. As the Titan and its escort fleet disappeared into the swirling vortex of a hyperspace jump, Skora and his team boarded their own ship. The sleek Iridian craft was built for speed and stealth, perfect for the dangerous mission ahead. Skora sat in the pilot's seat, his hands trembling slightly as he gripped the controls. He thought of his father, of the trust Admiral Stark had placed in him. He couldn't let them down. Ready? he asked his team. They nodded, their faces set with determination. Skora took a deep breath and punched the thrusters. The ship leapt forward, streaking towards the distant speck of the Kraxon command vessel. Towards destiny. Skora's heart pounded as he crept through the dimly lit corridors of the Kraxon command ship, his stolen armor clanking softly with each step. His team followed close behind, their weapons at the ready. The access codes provided by the late General Zaloth had gotten them this far but Skora knew their luck could run out at any moment. As they approached the ship's central control room, Skora held up a hand, signalling his team to stop. He peered around the corner and saw two cracks and guards standing in front of a massive reinforced door. Skora turned to his team and nodded. They knew what to do. In a flash, they burst around the corner, their weapons blazing. The guards fell before they could even raise their own rifles. Skora rushed to the door and punched in the stolen access code. The door hissed open, revealing a cavernous chamber filled with blinking consoles and holographic displays. In the center of the room stood a towering structure, pulsing with an eerie blue light. Skora approached it cautiously, his eyes widening as he realized what it was. The Doomsday Cannon, he breathed. One of his team members, a skilled hacker named Varro, rushed to a nearby console and began tapping furiously at the keys. I'm in, he said after a moment, downloading the plans now. Suddenly an alarm blared throughout the ship. Intruder alert, a robotic voice announced. All security forces to the central control room. Skora cursed under his breath. We've been discovered. Varro, how much longer? Almost there. 
Varro replied, his fingers flying over the console. Just a few more seconds. The sound of pounding footsteps echoed from the corridor outside. Scora and his team took up defensive positions around the room, their weapons trained on the door. Got it! Varro shouted, yanking a data chip from the console. The plans are ours. At that moment, the door exploded inward, and a squad of heavily armed Kraxon soldiers poured into the room. Scora and his team opened fire, the air filled with the deafening sound of energy weapons and the acrid smell of ozone. Scora ducked behind a console as a barrage of laser fire scorched the wall behind him. He popped up and squeezed off a few shots, taking down a Kraxon soldier. But more kept coming, their numbers seemingly endless. Fall back, Scora yelled over the din of battle. We have what we came for. His team began a fighting retreat, leapfrogging from cover to cover as they made their way towards the exit. But the Kraxons were relentless, pressing forward with a savage determination. Scora saw Varro go down, a smoking hole in his chest. He gritted his teeth and kept firing, his heart aching for his fallen comrade. They had to make it out, had to get the plans back to Admiral Stark. As they neared the hangar bay where their stolen Kraxon ship awaited, a massive explosion rocked the corridor. Scora was thrown off his feet, his head slamming against the wall. Dazed, he looked up to see a wall of fire separating him from the rest of his team. Go, he shouted, waving them on. Get the plans to the Admiral. His team hesitated for a moment, then turned and ran, disappearing into the smoke. Scora pushed himself to his feet, his armor scorched and dented. He could hear the Kraxons closing in behind him, their voices growing louder. He stumbled into the hangar bay, his vision blurry. He saw his team's ship, already lifting off the deck, its engines roaring. They had made it. The plans were safe. But Scora was cut off, the Kraxons hot on his heels. He spotted a row of escape pods along the wall and sprinted towards them, laser bolts sizzling past his head. He dove into the nearest pod, slamming the hatch shut behind him. His hands shaking, he punched the launch sequence and felt the pod shudder as it blasted free of the command ship. As the pod tumbled through space, Scorer slumped back in his seat, his breath coming in ragged gasps. He had done it. The plans were safe. But at what cost? Light years away, Admiral Stark stood on the bridge of the USS Titan, his face grim as he watched the Iridian colony burn on the viewscreen. The cracks and ambush had been devastating, catching the human fleet off guard and destroying the colony's vital research facility. But just before the facility was lost, a transmission had come through on a secure channel. It was from the lead scientist, a brilliant Iridian named Dr. Zoran. Admiral Stark, Zoran's voice had crackled over the comm, the sound of explosions and screams in the background. We did it. We found a way to stop the Doomsday Cannon. Stark had leaned forward in his chair, his heart racing. What is it, Doctor? An EMP device, specifically designed to target the cannon's Nexium power core. It will render the weapon inoperable. Stark had felt a surge of hope, but it was quickly tempered by the reality of their situation. But the Kraxons control the cannon. How do we get close enough to use the EMP? That's the problem, Zoran had said, his voice strained. The device has a limited range. You'll need to find a way to get it within striking distance of the cannon. The transmission had cut off then. The signal lost as the research facility was destroyed. Stark had sat back in his chair, his mind racing. They had a way to stop the Doomsday Cannon, but deploying it would be a suicide mission, they would need to get a ship close enough to the cannon to use the EMP, and that would mean flying straight into the heart of the Kraxon fleet. Stark closed his eyes, the weight of command heavy on his shoulders. He knew what he had to do. He just hoped that Scorer and his team had succeeded in their mission. Without the plans to the cannon, they would be flying blind. The fate of the galaxy hung in the balance, and time was running out. The Kraxons would not hesitate to use their new weapon, and if they did, countless worlds would burn. Stark knew that he would have to act fast, and he would have to be willing to sacrifice everything to stop them. He took a deep breath and opened his eyes, his gaze hard with determination. 
Helm, he said, his voice steady, set a course for the cracks in Homeworld. We're going to end this once and for all. Scorer drifted in the void of space, his escape pod tumbling end over end. He had barely escaped the cracks and command ship with his life. His thoughts raced as he wondered about the fate of his team. Had they made it out with the stolen plans? A bright light flooded the interior of the pod. Scorer squinted, trying to make out the source. A human ship loomed into view, its hull marked with the distinctive emblem of the Terran Union. A wave of relief washed over Scorer as the larger vessel locked onto his pod with a tractor beam, pulling him to safety. Once aboard, Scorer found himself face to face with Admiral Stark and his father, Commander Zoran. He wasted no time in revealing the stolen plans for the Doomsday Cannon. As the schematics flashed across the screen, the two leaders grew increasingly alarmed. By the stars, Admiral Stark muttered, his brow furrowed. The destructive potential of this weapon is beyond anything we've ever seen. Commander Zoran nodded grimly. If the Kraxons complete its construction, they could wipe out entire planets with a single shot. Their discussion was interrupted by an urgent transmission from Iridia Prime. The Confederation had dispatched a fleet, demanding that the humans withdraw immediately and leave the Iridians to fend for themselves. Admiral Stark's jaw tightened. He paced the room deep in thought. Finally, he turned to face Commander Zoran. I won't abandon your people, he declared. We started this fight together, and we'll see it through to the end. Skora felt a surge of respect for the human admiral. He knew the decision to defy the Confederation could have dire consequences, but Stark's resolve never wavered. The admiral gathered his officers and laid out a daring plan. A small infiltration team led by Skora and Captain Grayson would slip past the cracks and defences and sabotage the Doomsday Cannon. Meanwhile, the main human and Iridian fleets would engage the cracks on Armada, drawing their attention away from the strike team. Scorer and Grayson's team boarded a sleek, stealth-equipped vessel and set out for the Kraxon controlled system. Using the stolen access codes, they managed to slip past the enemy's perimeter defences undetected. As they approached the massive construction site of the Doomsday Cannon, Scorer's heart raced. The weapon was even more terrifying in person, its colossal barrel pointing ominously into space. Suddenly, alarms blared throughout the facility. The Kraxons had detected their presence and launched a fierce counterattack. Grayson's ship weaved and dodged, barely evading the incoming fire. We need to get closer, Scorer shouted over the din of battle. Grayson gritted his teeth, pushing the engines to their limit. Scorer held on tight as the ship careened towards the Doomsday Cannon. A barrage of Kraxon laser fire slammed into the ship's hull causing it to shudder violently. Grayson's face was illuminated by the flashing warning lights on the console. We can't take much more of this, he yelled. Scorer, you need to deploy the EMP device now. Scorer hesitated, realizing that Grayson's ship was too badly damaged to make it back. The captain met his gaze, a look of grim determination in his eyes. Go, Grayson urged. I'll buy you the time you need. With a heavy heart, Scorer nodded. He grabbed the EMP device and sprinted towards the airlock. As he launched himself towards the Doomsday Cannon, he saw Grayson's ship veer away, drawing the cracks on fire. Using his knowledge of the cannon's design, Scorer located the Nexium power core. He planted the EMP device, his hands shaking as he set the timer. With seconds to spare, he pushed off from the cannon, propelling himself into space. Behind him, the EMP device detonated in a blinding flash. A massive shockwave rippled outward, engulfing the Doomsday Cannon. Scorer watched in awe as the weapon crumbled, its structure disintegrating under the force of the blast. The nearby cracks and ships caught in the EMP's radius drifted lifelessly, their systems fried. Scorer felt a surge of triumph, tempered by the knowledge of Grayson's sacrifice. As he floated in space, Waiting for the human fleet to retrieve him, Skora knew that the battle was far from over. The Kraxons would not take this defeat lightly, but for now they had struck a decisive blow, and the galaxy had a fighting chance. As the wreckage of the Doomsday Cannon drifted in space, 
Cheers erupted from the human and Iridian ships. The Kraxan fleet, now leaderless and scattered, began to retreat. Scorer, exhausted but triumphant, made his way back to the USS Titan, where Admiral Stark greeted him with a firm handshake and a weary smile. Who oh, did it, son? Stark said. You saved us all. Scorer shook his head. We did it, Admiral, together. Their celebration was cut short by an urgent transmission from Iridia Prime. Scorer's heart sank as he listened to the panicked voice of his mother, barely audible over the sounds of chaos in the background. Skora, your father in do he's sick, everyone's sick, the Kraxons, they released something, a virus, it's spreading fast, we need help. Admiral Stark's face grew grim as he listened to the transmission. He turned to his medical officer, Dr. Chen, who was already analyzing the data from Iridia Prime. It's a bioweapon, Dr. Chen said, her voice shaking. Highly contagious, lethal, we've never seen anything like it. Skora felt a cold dread settle in his stomach. I have to go back. My people need me. Stark nodded, his eyes filled with understanding. I'll send a team of our best medics and scientists with you. We'll do everything we can to help. As Skora prepared to depart, a message came through from the Confederation. They demanded that the humans withdraw immediately, threatening to cut all ties with Earth if they continued to assist the Iridians. Stark's jaw tightened. He looked at Skora, then back at the message. We won't abandon your people, he said firmly, but I can't risk an all-out war with the Confederation. Not now. Skora nodded, understanding the difficult position Stark was in. I'll go alone then. My people will find a way. We always have. He boarded a small ship and set a course for Iridia Prime, his heart heavy with worry for his father and his people. When he arrived, the once vibrant capital city was in ruins. The streets were empty save for the bodies of the sick and dying. Skora raced to his family's home, where he found his mother weeping over his father's lifeless form. I'm sorry, she whispered, her eyes red with tears. He fought so hard, but the virus, it was too strong. Skora held his father's hand, feeling the weight of his loss and the responsibility that now fell on his shoulders. He buried his grief, knowing that his people needed him to be strong. In the days that followed, Skora worked tirelessly with the remaining Iridian scientists and doctors to find a cure for the virus. They set up makeshift hospitals and quarantine zones, trying to slow the spread of the disease. Admiral Stark kept his promise, sending whatever supplies and information he could without drawing the ire of the Confederation, but as the virus continued to ravage the planet, Skora knew that time was running out. Months passed, and the once thriving world of Iridia Prime became a shadow of its former self. The population dwindled, and the infrastructure crumbled. But Skora refused to give up hope. One day, as he stood on the balcony of his family's home, looking out over the ruined city, Skora received a message from Admiral Stark. The humans had found a promising lead on a potential cure based on the research of a brilliant Iridian scientist who had been working on the project before the Kraxon invasion. Skora felt a glimmer of hope, knowing that the alliance forged in the heat of battle had not been forgotten. The humans, once dismissed as angry and volatile, had proven themselves to be the most loyal and steadfast allies the Iridians could have ever hoped for. As the sun set over the ruins of Iridia Prime, Skora looked to the stars, where he knew his human friends were still fighting for a better future. He vowed to honor the sacrifices made by both Iridians and humans, and to rebuild his world no matter how long it took. The road ahead would be long and difficult, but with the support of his allies and the strength of his own determination, Skora knew that they would find a way to overcome even the darkest of challenges. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.